You like my cat? There's a lion in every one of them, isn't there? Now, I have a cat that knows that. She roars. Roaring saved her life. I can't remember the year now. The cat I have was my mother's cat. And uh, she named her Stormy. My folks have a, they lived in Florida, in uh, Melbourne. Of course, they had a Florida room, you know, on the back of the house where they had the television. And that was where they eat most of the time and spend most of their time. They had lots of windows. And they were in there during a hurricane. Now, you if you haven't been through a hurricane, you know they're pretty noisy. They are pretty noisy. Lots of wind and lots of rain. I remember a hurricane I was in in Florida. Uh, I was in a room on the second floor, and I looked out the window, and I saw a washing machine at the second floor level, not arcing and going to the moving straight and level past me. Whew. That's pretty windy. Well, during this hurricane, my mother heard meow, meow. She opened the door uh, to the yard, and there in water up to her neck was this kitten screaming like a lion, roaring like a lion. She went out, got her, took her in, became her cat, and when mother passed, and I brought Dad here, it became Carolyn's cat, and then Carolyn passed, and it became my cat, the cat who lived on my second floor for mm, four years, yeah. She wouldn't leave the second floor. Finally, when the other three passed, <laughs> she decided to come downstairs. But how do I know she knows that inner lion? She has no doubt. She walks up to me, Meow. and I go feed her. Later, Meow. Meow. I feed her some more. She speaks the word, and I do it. She never kind of goes, could I, baby, in your benevolence, could you put out a little scrap of something? Oh, no, absolutely not. She speaks that word, feed me, with power and authority. And no question that not only will I, but I darn well better. Sometimes at the grocery store, you know, I buy this cat food, and they say, oh, you have a cat? I said, yeah, and if I don't bring this home, she'll probably eat me. But do we know the same about ourselves? Do you know that there is an inner spirit? Now, there's a scripture from the first chapter of Genesis, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. Well, I think we're about close to well, four or five thousand years since that was a concept, since it was in the mind of man. Before it was written down, it's been quite a number of centuries. And we've been trying to do that, haven't we? With my personal will, with personality, with human ways of doing things, with things that don't work, things based upon how things look. We look outside, we say, how can I fix this? What do I have to do to make this right, make this better, make this the way I want it? 
Charles Fillmore said we do it all backwards. We look outside, we take in information from the appearances, and we decide the meaning of life and the, and the way to fix that and how to manipulate situations and people to fix that. Working from my very limited human self, my human concept of life, my human ideas. The whole world will teach you how it's to be done. It's not what you know, right? It's who you know. It's not what you have, it's how much you have. It's not what you do, it's how important are you. It's not that you have a nice house, but where you live in that nice house. All outer things that absolutely, in the overall scheme, doesn't matter at all. Be fruitful and multiply. We have the choice to do that, to build great good in our lives, to build great experiences in our lives. But after all the ages of experiences and experimentation, we still know little about who we are and of that power and ability, that power and authority that's been ours since the beginning. I think Jesus was a pretty smart guy. And Charles Fillmore did say very clearly that Jesus' secret was identifying with the Father. He looked to the source within. He looked to the Father within. He looked to the inner lion, if you will. The king of all. And not only looked there, but connected there. Reminded himself, the Father and I are one. He who sees me sees the Father. The Father performeth the works, and the other part of that being through me, but God does it through me. I am always connected to that source, and I have the authority, the divine authority, to use that God-given power and talent and ability. That's pretty smart. No wonder he could say to us, the things I do, you shall do in greater, meaning that we were going to grow be to a point even beyond where Jesus was when these, when these stories were written down. But it's time to realize uh, he fully demonstrated that, the, that there's an authority invested in each one of us. The authority as a child of God. And that if we follow the way he walked, if we follow his techniques, his method, his understanding, then we can do those things that he did. We can change our lives. We can overcome the challenges of life on this planet. And we don't get stuck in the web of personality, of materiality, of stuff and things, and we don't continue to wrestle with limitation and with lack. Are you tired of that yet? Yeah. Time to say, I'm done with that. Me is done with that. And the I of me overcomes that. We have used the time it takes to get out in and out of these experiences But we haven't used it to look into ourselves, to look to the source, to look beyond what appears outside, to look beyond what man has taught us about life, and see what God shows us about life. And that way we find the way around and through and beyond all these challenges that we think we have. And then we find that we have that power already innately within us and the authority to use that power to 
bring forth that likeness with which God created us. Remember, one of the first thoughts God had about his creation. Oh, let, let us create man in our image, after our likeness, implanting that perfect pattern within his creation. And then it gave us dominion over the experiences of life. That dominion comes from that inner authority, Christ in you, that image likeness. Now, the ability to accept or to reject that authority that's been given to us, we use all the time. We make a choice. Sometimes we think we don't have a choice because we're on automatic, and we automatically face the situations in life and react to them. I say react, not respond, but react to them the same ways. Well, I gotta fix this, I gotta make this stuff happen, I gotta work on this, this person, or I gotta work on that event, or I have to call and give the bank a piece of my mind. Do you ever wanna do that? Hmm. They never seem to have a problem about taking a piece of my, <laughs> of my goods. Yeah. Working at it the same way, from appearances, from human ideas and concepts. But every time, every situation that arises in our lives, there's, there's the opportunity to choose. Do I look within or do I continue to look out here? Do I work from inside out or am I going to continue to work outside trying to fix appearances? It's kind of like playing with silly putty, you know? I remember when you could try and mold it in, into various shapes and then set it aside and what happens to those very shapes. Kind of goes back to a puddle. It doesn't stay because it requires our continual work to keep it in place humanly instead of letting it be perfect divinely. It's all about how we think, how we perceive. And there's no halfway about it. We either think from within God thoughts into expression or we look outside and gather that information and think of a situation and see it as a human being. Oh, this is awful. Oh, there's no way through this. There's no way out of this. There's no cure for this. That's certainly not my cat looking in the mirror seeing her lion self. That's my cat looking in the mirror seeing her mouse self. Weak, victim, subject to the stuff that comes from outside. I know Jesus said in life, in this world you have tribulation. He said stuff happens. But be of good cheer. I am overcome the world. The way to overcome it is not from massaging out here. It's from getting in touch with the I of your being, the God self, the God setter, and beginning to get ideas from within, looking inside, asking God for guidance, being open, receptive, and responsive to that guidance, and then do that instead of what your neighbor tells you, or your school teacher told you, or even your preacher. That authority comes from that divine Christ center within. The choice is ours. A choice to be tossed around by the events, by the outer events, or to be sustained and to be carried through those events by that divine spirit of God inside. 
Which would you have? Which would you rather? Now, to make that choice, I think requires that well, we have to let go of our human thinking. All that habitual stuff that pops up. Sometimes whatever's your first thought in a situation. Oh, I need to, no, maybe you don't need to do that. Maybe there's another way, a better way, a way of light and not of ignorance, a way of God and not of humanity. To look to God thinking and not the human patterns that we've all learned and used. You may want to overcome some kind of physical limit of your, phys your body, your physical body. And touching that eternal, infinite life center, the Christ in you, that's the way you begin to feel that opening of that life into every cell of your body. Beginning to see the strength of God that is already within you and you allow it to flow forth through you. So you're stronger than anything that comes to you. There's a hymn in the hymnal, I am greater than my fears. Some of us kind of quake in the face of our fears. But there is that inner spirit, Christ of God in you, that image likeness first thought, that image likeness that's been placed in you since the beginning. Matthew, and then this one's not going to be up on the screen, but Matthew 28, verse 18. All authority hath been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus said that. He claimed that. All authority hath been given unto me in heaven and in earth. All ideas, all infinite possibilities for good, the ideas, the invisible ideas, those are mine to use, to bring into expression in my life, and to bring them into expression in this world of physicality on the earth. That power is given to me. Remember the story of the, of the, the king who didn't know he was a king? The prince who thought he was a pauper? If we don't realize it, it's not real to us. If it's not real to us, we don't think from that point of, of view or from that perspective. If it's not real to us, we don't have faith in it and we don't draw upon it. And we're like the... Well, I had a friend back in college who was a little odd. He loved vacuum cleaners. And he would talk to his vacuum cleaner. He lived in uh, the, at the conservatory in Cincinnati, he lived in the, um, the fraternity house, the frat house for uh, the National Music Honor, Honorary Society, uh, honorary fraternity, music fraternity. And so one time he was vacuuming in his room in that house, and apparently the vacuum was acting up. So later, people, other guys came into the frat house and they found the Hoover hanging from the banister in the second floor by its cord. And he said, oh, I'm punishing it. You could have the finest vacuum in the world, but your house would be filthy if you didn't realize that it was yours to use. 
to plug in and apply. It could be sitting there and be a beautiful thing to look at. And I understand some of those things are lots of money. I don't quite figure that out. I look at a vacuum cleaner and think, you know, there's not all that much there. But, hey, if you have it, but don't know you have it, don't know how to use it, don't plug it in, nothing happens. Oh, God bless Gary. I have known anybody who had such a relationship with vacuum cleaners. <laughs> ah. But he was a good singer, and he became a darn good school teacher in Toledo, Ohio, after he graduated. I do not know anything further about he, he and his vacuum cleaners. To express that authority that's been given you over heaven and earth is to realize that only that Christ self, only that image likeness within me has the power, is powerful enough, knows what to do is strong enough to bring to the outer world of experience of things the beauty, the perfection, and the joy of God's infinite good. How do you do that? Well, Charles Fillmore said, Stop looking and trying to figure it out by the information out here. Charles Fillmore did it every day. What would he do? He'd sit in his office and he'd appear to go to sleep. One time, Rosemary, as a young, as a young girl, brought one of her friends over to meet Grandpa. And uh, she went into his office, brought the little girl into his office, and there was Charles Fillmore, eyes closed. I think his head probably was down a little bit. And the, the little friend said, oh, your grandfather's sleeping. Oh, no, he's, he's in the silence. He spoke about going to headquarters. He spoke about getting wisdom and authority directly from headquarters. And that's what he would do. Shut his eyes and stop looking out here. Stop, when your eyes are open, you're thinking from out here. You can't go into an alpha state with your eyes open. Closed his eyes and began to connect with that image likeness within, that very spirit with which God created him. And he became open to to guidance, to direction, to new concepts, new ideas, and new possibilities. And it's there for you.